Night on the Night Team. March Madness is officially underway. We now know where our area teams will be playing in this year's tournament. Now we go on with fresh legs because we're freshmen too. Let's go. We'll tell you where your favorite will be. Plus, local Louisville groups held a walking pilgrimage for ceasefire in Gaza along the riverfront today. The march along the Ohio River simulated the coastline of Gaza. This is an international issue, but it's an absolutely local issue as well. We're hearing from people on why they joined the call to action. And later, everybody is a little bit Irish today. Today was a culmination of, of, of our week celebrations. This is a celebration of our culture. We are catching up with some St. Patty's Day celebrators as this festive day winds to a close. The WHAS 11 night team starts right now. Well, Selection Sunday is now in the books and it's officially time to fill out those brackets. It's our top story here tonight on the night team. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Alex Dieterer. Mason Hordisky is joining us now to show you who's in and who's out as March Madness gets into full swing. Mason. Yeah, that's right, Alex. <laughs> we are finally here. The madness is upon us as we now know where each and every team will be for the NCAA tournament. It all started earlier this evening with Selection Sunday where the Kentucky Wildcats waited to find out their fate. Kent Spencer was at John Calipari's house to preview what's to come for BBN. After Kentucky lost to Texas A&M on Friday, John Calipari alluded the Cats may take a hit when it comes to their NCAA tournament seed. Turns out that wasn't the case. They landed a three seed here at his house in Lexington. I asked him if he was surprised they didn't fall much. No, because if we could have gotten by that first one, I think we'd have had a two. Just on what was happening. We have a heck of a team going into this. Hard draw. You, know, you learn from my mistakes really fast. You know, even though you're young, you, you still understand, you know, a loss and, you know, just coming back with you know, revenge at the end of the day. If we lock in and we trust each other and we really want to win, we can do it. But if we don't trust each other, it won't happen. If the players seemed a little tired this selection Sunday, it was for good reason. We did something funny today. Oh, it'll make people mad. We took them bowling. Who oh, they took? Why weren't they playing in that championship? I took them bowling. And we competed against each other. I just want them to be free and loose. We're built for March. Let's go. For Coach Cal, Aduthiero, and Trey Mitchell, they are all from Pittsburgh. So this is a homecoming, even though Calipari said this isn't going home. This is a business trip. Reporting in Lexington, Ken Spencer, WHAS 11 News. Bowling, can you believe it? But that is not all, of course. The NCAA Women's Tournament Selection Show also tonight. Louisville finding out that there'll be a six seed taking on Middle Tennessee. You're not going to believe, though, where they are going. Coming up later on in sports, we'll hear from head coach Jeff Walls about a very juicy storyline when it comes to where they're going and if they make it past round one, who they could potentially run into. Alex? Thanks, Mason. We'll see you later on in sports. Calls for a ceasefire echoed across the waterfront today as hundreds of Louisvillians pleaded for peace in the ongoing Israel-Palestine conflict. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen and photojournalist Aspen Hester speak with event organizers and explain what they're doing to help the millions displaced in Gaza from 1,000 miles away. Free, free, free Palestine! Passionate pleas for peace. Palestinians want to live with equality and freedom, self-determination, just like any person in this world. Coming from all backgrounds and ages. Sharing in solidarity and sending a direct message. Stopping the killing of the Palestinians. Civilians stop the killing, period, of everybody. More than 100 people gathered at Waterfront Park to take part in a mile-long peace walk with a trail simulating Gaza's 25-mile-long coast. I think what is going on has raised awareness about the Palestinian struggle, about the occupation of Israel to the Palestinian land, and um, hopefully the people will be aware of that. Humanity will rise, and, you know, I, I'm hoping things 
things will improve. Organizers say the gathering focused on four points, calling for a lasting ceasefire, the immediate flow of life-saving humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip, the release of all Israeli and Palestinian hostages, and the end of Israeli occupation in the West Bank. I feel like every house in Gaza is holding and carrying a lot of pain. And even if the war like is stopped and the ceasefire happened, I feel they need at least five, six years to survive, like, you know, this, the current situation. The United Nations Children's Fund says more than 13,000 children have been killed in Gaza in Israel's offensive since October 7th, while others currently suffer from severe malnutrition. It's partly why this group is rallying to provide tangible support for those suffering on the ground, raising funds to donate to organizations helping to provide aid for displaced Gazans. Like for us, if we accept, like, you know, for these people to get killed, to get treated in this way, then we are reflecting a bad image for our society here. We are telling people it's okay. As pleas for peace continue, a strong show of support for those suffering abroad from right here in Louisville. From Waterfront Park, Connor Steffen, the WHAS 1119, on your side. Event organizers are raising money for two organizations, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency and the Peace Dove, which is a local Louisville effort. For more information, you can head to our website, whas11.com. Israel is prepping to launch a controversial offensive in Rafah. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu refusing to yield to international pressure. The Prime Minister claims assaulting the city is the only way to defeat Hamas. The Israeli Defense Federation tells ABC News that the plan includes humanitarian islands to provide food, shelter and medical care to the 1.5 million displaced Palestinians in the southern Gaza City. However, White House officials say they haven't reviewed any such plans. We've not seen those plans, um, and as we've said before, Martha, we would not support such an operation unless or until they can accommodate the 1.5 million refugees that are there. We're going to do it while we enable the civilian population in Rafah to leave, as we've done up to now, but we have to finish the job. Meanwhile, aid is starting to come in by land, sea, and air, but it's not nearly enough. The U.N. saying active firing zones have made deliveries more than high risk. Hostage negotiations are set to resume in Qatar this week. Israel is demanding that no adult males be allowed to return to northern Gaza, which has been mostly cleared of Hamas. Developing late here tonight, police are investigating after a shooting on 2nd Street right in the heart of downtown. LMPD says just before 7.15 this evening, officers responded to reports of multiple people firing guns in the middle of 2nd Street near the Omni Hotel. Police say the scene indicates that multiple people exchanged gunfire right in the middle of the block and then fled in all directions in different vehicles. Police say as of right now, there are no victims of the shooting that have been found and at least three cars were hit by gunfire. Right now, police are asking anyone with any information to come forward and share. If you have any information, you can call the anonymous tip line at 574 LMPD or use the online portal. Also new tonight, a person is behind bars after a deadly crash on Southern Parkway near Taylor Boulevard. Police say a Dodge Charger ran a red light at the intersection and hit a Honda in the intersection. The driver and passenger of the Honda were taken to the hospital where the passenger later died. Police say the driver of the Honda is still in the hospital where they are expected to survive. Police say the driver of the Charger was taken into custody and charged with murder, DUI and other related charges. Louisville Parks and Rec is now hiring for their 2024 swim season. After years of lifeguard shortages, this year Metro Parks is offering free training classes to get more people to sign up to be a lifeguard. Uh, today is our first day of our lifeguard training course. Uh, we have about six of them coming up for getting ready for the summer with the opening the swimming pools and getting staffed lifeguards everywhere. While the weather in Kentuckyana has a little ways to go for it to actually feel like summer, Louisville Parks and Rec is getting ahead of the curve by offering free lifeguard training courses. They have to pass a prerequisite, which is a 150 yard swim, uh, followed by an immediate two minute tread where they have to have their hands above the water or crossed across their chest. Once they pass that, the second prerequisite that we have is that they have to swim 20 yards dive down between seven and 10 feet, retrieve a 10 pound brick, and swim back to the starting point, get the brick out of the water and themselves out of the water, 
within a minute and 40 seconds. Metro Parks Aquatic Supervisor Beth Darrell says there are around 20 people in each class. Last year, only two outdoor pools were open in Louisville, while the Algonquin and Camp Taylor pools stayed closed all season for repairs and renovation. On top of that, Louisville has seen a shortage of lifeguards for years, but the shortage was really made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic. To combat the shortage of trained guards, Metro Parks is covering the $200 course fee if people pass the course and work for a Metro Parks pool. We have that as an incentive because next year hopefully we'll be opening a couple other facilities, new facilities, and it's been a very long time since we've had a new public pool in Louisville, so we're really excited about that. Algonquin and Camp Taylor Parks will be closed again this summer, but are expected to reopen next year. The next lifeguard training classes will be this upcoming Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 5. They're held at the Mary T. Maher Aquatic Center. Well, it is now winding down, but a very happy St. Patrick's Day to you all and your families from us here at WHAS 11. Several places across the Derby Sitter today celebrated the day, including the Irish Rover over on Frankfurt Avenue. The bar hosted their annual St. Patrick's Day tent party. The annual party had live music, food, and several pints of Guinness and green beer. People there tell us that today is all about celebrating the Irish culture. What's happening here today is happening in small towns and villages all over Ireland. So it's now, you know, it wasn't as big a deal until the tourist folks started coming to Ireland and people said, well, why don't you celebrate your National Saints Day? And we have done it with. And that festive party wrapped up at 9 tonight.